Hello and welcome to Marketing91.com. Let's start with understanding impact of taxation. Impact of tax refers to the initial stage of tax burden. The person on whom the tax is first imposed bears the initial burden of tax. It is always on the person who is statutorily liable to pay the tax to the government. In case of indirect taxes such as sales tax, impact is on producer or trader and the final burden is on the consumers. Initially, tax is paid by producers or traders to the government. However, the money burden of tax is eventually shifted to the consumers. In case of direct taxes such as income tax, impact and final burden is on the same individual. An individual who pays the tax cannot shift its burden. Tax shifting refers to the process of transferring the money burden of tax to another person. It is possible only through the process of exchange, that is, via sale and purchase. Tax shifting is of two types, forward and backward shifting. Forward shifting. In forward shifting, tax burden is shifted from the producer to the consumers in the form of an increase in the price of a commodity either by the entire or partial tax amount, for example, excise duty. Further, Producers may shift the tax burden to consumers by reducing the quality or quantity of the taxed commodity in the form of a sale transaction. Backward Shifting In backward shifting, tax burden of a commodity is shifted backward to the agents of production through the purchase transaction. For example, the producer may force his material supplier to accept lower prices or face his employees to work for lower wages. Thus, the price of the tax commodity remains the same and the tax burden is borne by the seller or producer of raw materials and not the end consumers. Next is combination of both. In this type of tax shifting, the producer of a tax commodity can transfer the tax burden by bringing about a partial rise in price as well as a partial reduction in the payments for the factors of production. Single point and multi point shifting. Single point shifting occurs when the tax burden is shifted directly from the manufacturer or producer to the consumer. Multi point shifting occurs when the tax burden is shifted from one point to multiple points. For example, when the government imposes an excise duty on goods, it may be paid by the producer. However, the producer may shift the tax burden to the wholesaler, who in turn may shift it to the retailer, who may eventually pass it to the consumer. Moving on to incidence of taxation. The incidence of tax refers to the ultimate money burden of tax. It is not possible to shift tax burden beyond this point. The difference between impact and incidence is. Impact refers to the initial burden of tax, whereas incidence refers to the ultimate burden of tax. Impact occurs at the point of tax imposition, whereas incidence occurs at the final source from where the money comes. The impact of tax is on those who have the first responsibility of paying it to the government, whereas the incidence of tax is on those who ultimately pay the tax. If the original taxpayers can pass the money burden on to others, as in the case of indirect taxes such as excise, impact can be shifted but incidence cannot be shifted. If the money burden cannot be transferred, as in the case of direct taxes, impact and incidence falls upon the same individual. Effects of taxation imply the economic consequences of tax imposition. The imposition of a tax results in both beneficial and harmful economic consequences on production, saving, investment, allocation of resources, distribution of income and wealth, etc. Effects can result from tax imposition, change in the tax rate, as well as tax shifting, impact and incidence. According to Dalton, incidence is one of the effects of a tax. Incidence includes only the money burden of tax. However, the effects of taxation cover a wide range of money and real burdens. Now let's look at the Dalton's concept of incidence. According to Dalton, the imposition of a tax causes two forms of burden on the people. Money burden. It refers to the amount of tax that must be paid by the taxpayer to the authorities. The disposable income of the people is subject to money burden. Direct money burden refers to the amount of tax collected in the form of money, that is, amount of tax being paid by the taxpayers. Indirect money burden is a result of the additional expenses paid by the taxpayer, such as expenses on conveyance or administration while paying tax. Real burden is the sacrifice made by taxpayers on account of the imposition of tax. It is equivalent to the loss of economic welfare to the individual as well as to the society. 
Direct real burden refers to an immediate loss of economic welfare to the taxpayer, for example, decline in the real income of the taxpayer. Indirect real burden refers to the reduction in consumption, saving, investment, etc., owing to the imposition of tax. Moving on to Hicks' concept of incidence. According to Mrs. Ursula Hicks, incidence can be classified into two categories, formal and effective incidence. Formal incidence. It refers to the total tax revenue collected by the authorities in the form of any particular tax over a period of time. It refers to the direct money burden of a tax. Effective incidence. It refers to the consequences of the imposition of a tax. It is a difference between the pre-tax economic setup and the post-tax economic setup. It typically includes the reactions of taxpayers with respect to consumption, saving, willingness to work, investments and so on. It is difficult to measure effective incidence due to interrelations among various economic variables in the economy. The last concept is Musgrave's concept of incidence. Musgrave believes that the problem of tax incidence is a part of a much bigger problem of economic consequences of a budget policy. According to Musgrave, incidence refers to the resulting change in the distribution of income available for private use. Budget policies that involve the transfer of resources may cause changes in the distribution of income. Because a budget has two sides, the tax side and the expenditure side, the study of incidence considers both sides of the budget. Musgrave takes into consideration the following five types of incidence. Specific tax incidence. It refers to the resulting changes in the distribution of income available for private use when the government brings about a change in a specific tax, keeping other taxes or expenditure programs constant. Differential tax incidence. It refers to the resulting changes in the distribution of income available for private use when a tax is replaced with another tax to generate the same amount of revenue. Specific expenditure incidence. It refers to the resulting changes in the income distribution when the government changes public expenditure in terms of money, keeping the taxes constant. Differential expenditure incidence. It refers to the resulting changes in the distribution of income available for private use when one expenditure program is replaced with another expenditure program, keeping the taxes constant. And lastly, balanced budget incidence. It refers to the combined effects of changes in both tax policies and expenditure policies on the distribution of income. Thank you.